Hello, my name is Steve Bowler, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at trace options. Specifically within trace options, we're going to be taking a look at basic trace option functions. So what I'm going to do in this lab is I'm going to lay a solid foundation on trace options. I'm going to show you why and where you would want to use trace options. And if you're familiar with the Cisco iOS, then you probably have used the debug command and what the trace option command is going to allow you to do is similar to what the debug command allows you to do. So I'm going to go ahead and explain all of this in detail but first let's go ahead and take a look at the network diagram that we have. We have router 1 and 3. They are both connected to each other via gig E001 unit 0 and they have the IP address of 13.13.13.0. .13 .13 router 1 is the dot 1, router 3 is the dot 3, and that is a slash 24 subnet mask. Router 3 also has a loopback 0.0, .0 interface with the IP address 3.3.3.3, the forward slash 24 subnet mask. And router 1 and 3 are both in OSPF area 0. So in this lab what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you basic trace options using OSPF as the routing protocol. So the first thing we're going to do is on router 1 we're going to go ahead and bring up the connection between R1 and R3. So we'll get in a configuration mode. We'll do the command set interfaces gig E001 again logical unit 0 family inet with the address of 13.13.13.1 13 .13 forward slash 24. Let's go ahead and commit and quit. And then on R3, we'll go ahead and do the same thing. We'll do set interfaces giggy 0, 0, 0, 0, I'm sorry, 0, 0, 1. Logical unit 0. The family is going to be inet and the address is going to be 13.13.13.3 forward slash 24. So if we go ahead and commit and quit on R3, now we should be able to ping between R1 and R3. So we'll do from R3 ping 13.13.13.1. We'll do a rapid ping with the count of 1000. And as you can see, we have reachability. So the next thing we want to do, if we look at our network